Okay, now in this in this video, I'm going to show you some of the other WAN technologies which can be used in today's networks. That is MPLS, Multi Protocol Label Switching. Now this is one of the most popular WAN technology which is used in today's networks. Now the main reason is it's it's more like a frame relay only. It's it's just works like a frame relay where you have a pre-existing service for network, and we call this as MPLS core. Typically, we call it as MPLS core the backbone of the service for network which is built by the service forwarder and then let's take an example I got a customer A and the customer A wants to provide connectivity to customer A on the other side now we are going to connect to the nearest service forwarder device and in case of MPLS terminology we call this as provider edge routers provider edge routers uh, provider edge routers and the middle routers we call them as provider routers and the customer routers we call them as customer edge routers now the major difference between the frame relay and this one is uh, when, when you're sending the packet it will go as a normal IP packet normal IP packet but it, when it enters the service portal the packet is forwarded from this end to this end other end of the customer in the form of a label rather than forwarding based on the normal IP packets and that's what we call as label switching here now multi protocol label switching we call this as multi-protocol label switching. Now, the, the reason for that is uh, multi-protocol means this, this technology can be implemented on any kind of layer 2 connection. Now, the connection which is built between the routers, uh, whatever the connection we are using between customer to service provider or between service providers, it can be any form of layer 2 connection. Like it can be a serial interface running a PPP HDLC encapsulations or it can be an Ethernet interface like we discussed in the Metro Ethernet lines. It can be your frame relay or it can be your lease line. It can be any kind of layer to connectivity. So that's the reason we call it as multi protocol. It might be using any encapsulation, any layer to protocol and all the packets are switched based on the labels rather than rather than forwarding based on the IP packets or any other formats. Now, this is something most of the service providers has uh, has been using nowadays. And it's one of the common topic in the service portal as well. Now the major reason is it's more scalable. So that is one of the major advantage most of the service providers uses when you compare with frame relay or or lease line connections. It's it's a little bit scalable for the service portal networks because it's it's something like you know the service portal is going to build once a core network and is going to sell for many customers. So let's take an example here. You have a service power network. This is a core network. And right now, currently, we have somewhere around 100 customers. Let's say we have some 100 customers. And the service power is providing the 100 customer sites. In fact, we can say uh, around 20, 30 customers, probably 100 sites. Now in the next couple of months, probably the customer might increase their own locations. Or you may have some new customers. Probably it changes to 200. Now, without, uh, without making much changes or without actually upgrading much, we can still provide the connectivity for these 200 customers as well. Now, the good thing about this MPLS is uh, once you build, you can, you can add any number of customers. Just you connect to the nearest, nearest uh, possible uh, service for a device. And then you can build one logical uh, virtual private network we call as logical VPN tunnel, which can be built which allows you to send a traffic from one end to another end in the form of a label rather than forwarding based on the packets, rather than based on the IP packets. Okay, so, so the service portal is going to build one time and it's going to provide, uh, it's going to use all the possible routes like there is something called multi MPLS traffic engineering concept in this. It's something really very advanced topics where it is going to see if the customer requirement is let's say 2 mbps of traffic and if this particular link is not having 2 mbps of bandwidth in that case it can redirect from alternate possible route and then to reach the other end of the destination so it uses all the possible routes and whichever the route is having that 2 mbps of bandwidth it is going to use that particular route and the forwarding is not based on the routing we are not based on the routing best route it's based on some conditions we can define uh, the minimum bandwidth required and based on that conditions it is going to use all the possible routes now apart from that 
uh, the actual traffic let's say there is something called 192.168.1. network which is customer a lan interface trying to communicate with 192.168.2. network on the other side now once the customer traffic enters there is a logical uh, virtual connection which is built by the service provider from this end to that end now we call this as mpls vpn now once the service provider once the customer traffic enters it's not going to forward based on the customer source and destinations it's going to add one label now you have a normal packet here it's going to add one label here and the customer traffic is forwarded based on the label by seeing this label not seeing the actual IP header and it will forward it on the remote destination uh, remote VPN remote P router based on the label and then it is forwarded back again to the customer as a normal IP packet so when the customer is sending as a normal IP packet receiving as a normal IP packet but in between the packets are switched based on the labels rather than forwarded based on the IP addressing now one of the major benefit here is Without knowing the actual customer routes, the service provider will be still able to forward the packet. That's one of the major reason here without knowing the actual IP header because normally what happens when, when any packet is sent to the next router, if that router don't know the destination network ID in the routing table, it will drop the packet. But here it's not seeing that packet, it's seeing the label which is assigned by this router and it will remove on the next router. So this makes a little bit scalable for the service provider because the service provider no need to maintain the customer routes in each and every routing tables. And it also gives the flexibility that you can have some other customer also using the same network. No problem because this customer is using one door network. This customer also might be using one door network, but still it's not going to create any problem because the actual forwarding is based on the VPN label that is MPLS label not based on the actual IP header. Now there are some, many, some more advantages like uh, there is a concept of virtual route forwarding here. In fact, there are many things in this MPLS. We are not getting into all those things. I'm just highlighting some of the few important points here. It supports something called virtual route forwarding where a router can have multiple routing tables on the same router. So it's more like, you know, let's take an example. I have I have a customer router. Let me take an example. I have a customer A, customer B, customer C. They are based on the same location and they are connecting to the same service border. Probably my service border is um, a service border one and they, they, they are connecting to the router. Probably they might be connecting to the same router through some LAN, but there is a possibility that the routes coming from the customer A and can leak into customer B and customer C. Now to prevent that, we need to do some route filtering kind of things like where you can do some ACL, where you need to say that any routes coming from here should not go to here, here. It's going to make much complications. So instead, or, or there is one alternate solution what service provider can do is, he can say that, okay, we got three customers and all the three customers will be connecting to three different routers. So that is something, one more thing. But now, uh, in this case, we are not going to do that. The service provider provides a router. The router can have multiple routing tables and multiple VRF instances. Now, it means that this router is going to maintain a separate routing table for VRF A, that is what for customer A, and the separate routing table for customer B, separate routing table for customer C. Now, you have a concept of virtual route forwarding, a concept where you can have a single router can have multiple routing tables without it's like separate router only and also it has one more routing table that is global routing table which is used inside the service point network and any routes coming from this customer a will be automatically placed in a separate routing table based on the configurations again we have to apply this interface under the vrs something like that any routes coming on this interface will be automatically placed in the separate routing table and each and every routing table is isolated with each other by default now this is also one more uh, uh, flexibility which is uh, which will be provided in the MPLS where you can have multiple customers connecting on the same provider edge router but still differentiate by using some different VRFs and then when it goes through the service point network they add some labels and each and every uh, traffic is forwarded based on the labels which is going to simplify the job of the service point. 
so that that makes uh, vmpls a little bit more common uh, technology which is used in service for network when it comes to uh, modern kind of wan connections uh, modern kind of wan connections if you talk about service forwarders or if you are doing some any ccna ccnp service for tracks so most of the most of the concepts you will be covered are more in detail on mpls uh, technologies